drop, we were on the fire. And I figured this is it. We're finished. But we did. We did finish. Me and the lieutenant, I was his radio telephone operator. Uh, we almost got to the creek when he was hit. And he took a, he took a, a bullet in, in, in the throat. I tried to drag him back away from the away from the fire, and while I was leaned over, uh, they shot my radio. I was extremely lucky that I was bent over; otherwise, I would have I would have been hit in the chest. I was carrying a 45 caliber pistol as my personal weapon, but they were shooting AK-47s and rockets at us. Bullets were flying all around us. So when we got linked up with the Alpha Company, I picked up an M16 off the ground and 10 ammo clips, and uh, we started firing back into the tree line and stopped their uh, approach. And when they went back, we set up three mortars and started firing mortars into the tree line, white phosphorus. And uh, we could hear them yelling, we could smell burning flesh. We started firing back into the tree line further, and we were wiping them out. He was unique in the sense that all hell broke loose out all at one time. We had a unit that had uh, run ahead of everybody, which they called the Lost Platoon. And what they meant by that isn't that they didn't know where they were. They thought they were all dead. You're a young kid. You're 19. You have no clue as to what's going to happen. Bullets are flying all over. Mortars are flying at you. And uh, it, the noise is, is unbelievable. All right? I got a hearing problem today because there was so much going on. The biggest thing was the, was the intenseness of the battle the longevity of the battle, uh, and, you know, so many men getting killed. I mean, it's, uh, it's, that's what just stays in your mind, you know. Anytime I think about the battle, I think about the guys that were killed. We lost, out of uh, our company, we lost 79 men. And uh, out of the whole battalion, we uh, had the total of the, that battle and the sister battalion was 239 killed, 121 of us wounded. The guys that, uh, that didn't come home, return home alive, were my comrades, and I knew them all by first and last name. I knew a lot about them and uh, loved every one of them. I'm, I'm Neil Kroger's little brother. That's my, that's my tag. When it happened so soon, I didn't know if he was a green lieutenant that made a dumb mistake and got himself killed. Uh, it wasn't until um, I read the book that I knew he was a career soldier that died holding the line uh, of Charlie Company. And, um, you know, there are guys here that have met me and said, I'm here because your brother isn't, you know. I was informed that uh we had numerous wounded, uh, already had lost two real good friends of mine that I had trained with for two years at Fort Benning. Uh, that was Sergeant Gill, he was already dead. Uh, Staff Sergeant Elliott was already dead. Uh, it, it was, it was uh, quite a shocker to see, see what was going on at that point. So we got there and we started to come in to land and uh, we were taking a lot of fire. I mean, the, my, one of my lieutenants, uh, Taboda, who was a, was a Cuban, he'd been to the Bay of Pigs in Cuba. He was wounded, and my radio telephone operator, Gilbert Nicholas, sitting in a helicopter like this, flying in this direction, and he was sitting here right, right, right next to me, and uh, I felt a I started, I bent over, I remember, to unhook my seat belt because we were going to get out and I knew generally the direction I was supposed to go with my troops. And uh, I felt a, a bullet go across the back of my neck. And I remember turning, just, I just thought I was going to watch the bullet. And it hit my radio telephone operator right, he was sitting back like this, right in the head, and it, he just killed him right away. I was sitting up against this tree eating a can of cold ham and lima beans, which was my favorite meal, when the first shots fired. And it never, you know, it was like utter chaos from that moment on. So 
in some ways you don't get a lot of chance to think about things when things happen that fast you just kind of like go into automatic mode and I think most of us are programmed to where we really don't know what we can do and that we have to do it. He said well you have to know he said I want you to know my intention is to come back to go do what I have to do with the other guys and he goes I'm not going with strangers we've been training together and I trust these guys with my life, but I'd also lay down my life for any of them.